Welcome to Five Keys to Achieving Your Customer Communication Goals in 2019. I'm your host, Keith Hitchcock, digital content producer here at ZipWhip, and I'm hosting this ZipWhip webinar series designed to help you to help business professionals with their commu customer communication strategies. We want to, uh, with this webinar series, which you might call Zipinars if you want, uh, we're going to help you with practical tips, tools, resources, and high level thought uh, that will hopefully help with your communication thought and communication goals and actions. So that is me, and I want to uh, go right into introducing Adam. We can always already see him on screen here. This is Adam Anderson, uh, VP of Revenue Marketing at ZipWeb. He has extension, extensive experience in the communications and marketing realms. His past experience includes Expedia and Microsoft. We're so glad to have, have him as a guest today on our ZipNR. And Adam, I'm going to hand it over to you just to tell you a, have you tell us a little bit more about yourself. Sure. Thanks, Keith. I'm really happy to be here, too. Uh, so I've been in communications and marketing, like you mentioned, uh, my whole career, including uh, B2C and B2B settings through Expedia, Microsoft, Dolby Laboratory. So this is a topic near and dear to my heart. So thanks for having me. Awesome. OK, well, that is a little bit about us. And now we want to get to know you a little bit more via uh, our first poll here. So it's not just us doing this doing this event, but it's you doing this event together. So question to you is, how are you feeling about your business's communication with customers? You may have made some New Year's resolutions around your business and how you communicate with customers, and uh, maybe you haven't fulfilled those yet. But anyway, here's the current snapshot. How are you feeling about your communication with customers? Goodish? Badish? Neutral-ish, and if you haven't yet um, found the uh, the where to submit this, uh, well, it's just the little the little bubble next to the words. So I'll give you a couple more seconds to engage with that, and then I will close the poll. Here we go. Poll is closed, and now we get to look at the results. So almost half of you are feeling goodish about your, your communication with customers. Some of you are feeling badish, and uh, a lot of you are also feeling neutral-ish. So you've come to the right spot, whether you're feeling good, bad, or neutral-ish. Um, hopefully, even if you're feeling good, um, you'll walk away with a tip or two that will help you on your way to improving things over there. So what's next here? Our agenda, agenda overview. Come on, mouse. There we go. <laughs> okay, uh, our quick overview is we will go through our learning objectives. Uh, then I'll have the, the bulk of our time together is gonna be presentation live resources. That should take us about 30 minutes. And then we'll have some time for a live Q&A. So even if you have a, a question somewhere along the way, feel free to toss that into the question window. And uh, we will get to that when we get to the live Q&A action. So real quickly, um, if you are new to GoToWebinar, you should be seeing uh, you should have a control panel off to the m main window over here, and you should have an audio area and where you can adjust your audio audio levels. Hope, hopefully, you're hearing us okay, and if not, you can you you should be able to adjust it over there, or change how you're listening to it, uh, if if you have headphones or some other device. Um, then there is a question window. If you have a comment a long way, there's no rule against tossing a comment into the question panel. Okay, so feel free to engage with both both comments and questions along the way. What we want to do is give you five big main uh, takeaways here, and we are hoping that you will um, glom onto one of these. One of these will be juicy uh, takeaways for you to take away and, and implement into your, your own business to improve your communications. So with that, uh, oh, I do want to say too that uh, you will be uh, getting a one page cheat sheet with these five takeaways and the five action items that we're giving to you, along with links to the various 
um, resources that we are mentioning along the way. So know that that is along the way, uh, coming along the way with also a recording of the video recording if you want to, to review any of the sections or all of it, um, maybe with your team. So with that, I think it's time to get going here with our main chapter. And, and with that, I will turn it over to Adam. Thanks, Keith. So let's dive into our first key strategy, and that is to humanize your conversations with customers. And so that is actually our first key strategy. It's also our first key action step. And I'll tell you a little bit more about how you can do that right now. So customers really want to have authentic experiences with brands. And that means personal communications um, that really enable a connection to the human side of the business. So that doesn't necessarily mean a face-to-face -face phone uh, in interaction, doesn't mean a phone call. Uh, what I'm really talking about is just the relatable emotional connection that you have with your customers. And so it can be tone. And I also think about it in terms of shared values. So we talk a little bit about uh, shared values first. So there's a, uh, a site called The Muse. They published a great article that covered this and gave a, a really solid example that I'm going to relay on to you, uh, Warby Parker. So they are the uh, mail order online uh, eyeglasses company. And the founder's story is really um, core uh, to their business and their brand. And it was rooted in the fact that there was a couple of young guys uh, looking for cool looking eyeglasses that didn't cost a ton of money. And so they built a company that answered that need. And for anyone who like themselves went to buy glass and found them all too lame or too expensive, the emotional message there is, hey, I've been there. I know how that feels. Uh, let me help you. Now, the article author points out that if Warb Warby Parker was run by like a, an old anonymous rich guy who never wore glasses and only launched the company because the margins were good, product can still be awesome, but the emotional connection is really low. So really try to connect you to customers, explain to them that you share values, that you understand them. That's one part of the puzzle for humanizing your conversations. The other part is tone. And businesses often forget to humanize their interactions with, with customers instead of thinking that professional communication requires formally or ro formal or robotic language. You know, when you make an effort to use the same language that your customers use when they're speaking with you, you create a more relaxed environment and authentic experience, which leads to increased customer satisfaction. And, um, you know, it makes me think about a time when I was working at Expedia and we we're explaining how change and cancel fees from our travel partners like airlines and hotels were applied to travelers when they revised their travel itineraries. And, you know, previously we had this up, this uh, dry legalese explanation that was technically accurate um, but it, it really sounded um, very impersonal and so we made the change and we wanted to make sure that we conveyed that we empathize because sometimes travel changes can be stressful uh, so we changed the language to something more human like we understand that your that travel plans can change and we never charge any fees or canceling or changing your plans however hoteliers and airline partners may have changed or cancel fees that we pass through so uh, just a little anecdote there. In general, I believe that when you make an effort to connect with people on a personal level, you can increase the affinity that customer has for your business. Great. That's so helpful. And, you know, I, I think it's it, more and more businesses are are humanizing the way they communicate. But, you know, on a personal note, I, I want to live in a world where uh, uh, the the businesses that I that I go to are treating me like a human. So uh, it, it makes total sense to be, to be like moving in this direction if, if you are, what, if whatever channels of communication you have aren't, aren't quite human yet, or could be more human. So that was great. Um, before diving into our next key strategy, let us do another poll. Who's ready? So how much are you leveraging videos in your business? Okay, some people, more people are here. You might've missed the first poll, but you can definitely chime in on this one. So are you rocking it? Could you be a little bit better with the videos that you're putting out there or are you just not doing them at all? 
I'll give you a little bit time to engage with that. And then you'll see why we are pulling you on this, this question with our key strategy two. Okay, I'm gonna close the poll. Quick, quick, click it. Here we go. Let's look at the results. Okay, some of you out there are rocking video. Way to go. Then you can, you can just snooze for the next five minutes. No, no need to uh, listen to key strategy two. A lot of you could be doing better and a lot of you are not doing video at all. Now, some businesses aren't, aren't you know, maybe, maybe video doesn't make sense, but maybe it does. Okay, thanks for engaging with that. And I'll let Adam take it into key strategy number two. All right, well, for those 6% of you who are rocking it, I still hope that you're paying attention because <laughs> before we get actually into video specifically and why those are important. I want to talk about the content of your video or your content in general. I mean, coming from a marketing background, this is this is really important. Um, you know, and and I like to just think about it in three key themes. First is is uh, creating content that educates, second is inspires, and third is entertains. And you should be getting at least one of those and bonus points if you get all three. Uh, so there's the, the the rationale is just that there's a lot of content out there. And so if you're asking people to spend time with your content, your brand, you better have um, you better add some value, you better have high value content. And if you think about it in terms of these three themes, you can make sure that you're you're hitting a, an area that's likely to provide value. So entertaining, I'll take that one first. You know, we're all human. We all like to have a little fun. Uh, if you can make someone laugh, it's likely going to be something that they can remember. I mean, if you guys had watched the Super Bowl, you'll see a lot of those advertisers really get that uh, and apply that to their advertising. And next is Inspire. And, you know, again, pulling from the Super Bowl, there was a great Microsoft ad that was very emotional about the Xbox adaptive controller. Uh, and even if you didn't see that one, I'm 100% sure that you're familiar with Nike's Just Do It campaigns. I mean, these are all about making customers feel something. So they don't have to be super lofty, like those two examples. Even case studies are good examples of everyday inspirational content. Uh, the final one is education. I mean, people are usually willing to engage with the content if they can learn something. So this is a great source of content for a lot of different businesses. So blogs, this is a lot of the sweet spots for many uh, company blogs. They're uh, written from a how-to perspective. And um, if you go on YouTube and you're a DIY person, you see tons of DIY videos about how to install your sink, uh, do home repairs, et cetera. So lots of great education content across the internet. Uh, really a strong area for you to investment. And so getting back to video, uh, all that content can be applied to video. And I want to share a compelling stat with you to indicate how important this is. More than 50% of consumers want to see videos from brands. And that's more than any other type of content or another type of media. So that's a really powerful stat when you think about all the different types of content you're capable of generating. And uh, also from HubSpot, who gave me that, uh, that statistic, is video on landing pages is capable of increasing conversion rates by 80%. So 80% is huge. Uh, so if you're not already doing video, it's time to start. And if you're not yet in the rocking it department, which I think 94% of you guys are not, um, I recommend that you make the investment ramp it up. So listen, it sounds intimidating. I don't want you guys to feel like that's a barrier to entry. Don't shoot for perfection out of the gate. The technology these days is so good um, and so accessible. Even cell phones are capable of capturing decent video, and there are loads of available video editing software options that are come free or maybe even came with your computer. Um, so just think about those types of de the video content that you want, you know, demo videos, how-to videos, the expert interviews is another good format, live event, case studies. Uh, there's tons of types of videos, and uh, Keith, I believe in your in the one sheet that you're leaving everybody with, you're gonna have a link to a good post about video marketing from HubSpot. Yeah. Uh, and uh, when when you guys get that, it really it will, you'll see it's helpful. It goes through a step-by-step -step production process, including pre-production and post-production. Very practical, very helpful. I promise it'll make what may seem intimidating to be um, a lot easier. 
So uh, we have an action step for you on video, and I'm actually going to turn the tables on Keith a little bit here. Uh, Keith has got a, a great experience uh, in, in production, and I wanted to make sure we got a chance to leverage that experience. So Keith, could you please tell everybody what the action step is with respect to video? Drum roll, please. As you might expect, it is make a video. And uh, so it's, it's a two-step, it's a two-step action step. One is make a video, just do it, okay? Even if you're rocking it, make a video. Second is something that may not be so uh, intuitive, it's optimized for audio. When people think of video, they're thinking, oh, I gotta, I gotta make it really pretty. Um, nice lighting and, you know, let's think about our props and uh, people wearing their, their, co their nice clothes or whatever. And yes, that's important, but I would say that audio is as important, if not more important. And I'll tell you why. This, this, uh, this experience we're having right now, this live webinar is potentially an, a, an example of you watching video uh, and hearing audio at the same time. And now, whereas you, uh, you know, if our, I'm watching, I'm watching Adam and his video is skipping a little bit. It's not even 24 frames per second, which is a normal movie, movie, uh, you know, cadence. Um, so it's, it's, it's just slightly choppy. And yet his audio is coming through really nicely. I can hear him just fine. He's got a nice headset on and a good mic there. Uh, that is the content that we're really caring about. Um, you could you could probably you'd be picking it up if you weren't seeing Adam, even though the visuals you know helps humanize your the experience key strategy one. But this is all to say that audio, uh, the audio and the sound, whether it's music, it's uh, verbal text, that is so important to be conveying. It's not choppy. It's not there's not a lot of background noise and that all all, all that stuff giving you a good experience to receive the content of the video. So how to do that? Well, think, think about how to capture good audio. Um, even if you are shooting with a cell phone, as uh, Adam mentioned, there are ways to make that audio better. You can actually hook up an external microphone to a cell phone. Um, you can do the same for a DSLR or whatever camera you're working, working with. The idea is to get that mic as close to uh, the individual speaking as possible. So if, if, is it a lab mic that's right under uh, someone's chin? Is it a, a handheld mic that they're holding? Or uh, is it a boom mic that's coming in from above? Uh, whatever, whatever you can do to get that mic as close to the person's um, mouth who's speaking, the better. So that is your tip. There's that, that HubSpot resource that Adam mentioned, goes into more details about gear, um, mic placement, um, and so on to, to help you optimize that audio. So I hope that's a little, uh, the little action step that will help you on your way to feeling more confident about what you put out there in the world in terms of video. Make a video, optimize for audio. Okay. Thanks, Keith. And before I toss it back out over you, Adam, um, you've talked about, the step has, has been about creating content that educates, inspires, and entertains. We've just been drilling down on video, but where, and you've mentioned some other content sources, but will you just kind of list a few other areas of content that we should be thinking about when we think about content creation? Oh, sure. I mean, listen, there's, there's approaches to content, which I talked about the themes of what you're trying to, to do to resonate with people. Then there's the medium. Right, so there's videos, there's blogs, there's uh, eBooks or reports, white papers, case studies. I mean, there's just all sorts of mechanisms that you can use to get content up there. Um, you know, we're, we're focused a lot with online content um, because it proliferates and it's an easy way for folks to, uh, to get familiar with your company uh, when you make those types of investments. But uh, really, I mean, we could even talk about pieces of paper that you get at a, at a, in the mail. I mean, that's content right. marketing too, you know? Right. So it, it really spans the media across all, uh, across all different types of delivery mechanisms. The key is, is that just, you gotta make sure you, that content connects with people in the right way. Cool, great, thanks for that clarification. Let's dive into key strategy number three, eh? Sure, sounds good. Uh, so this is a, one of my favorite ones because as a marketer, I'm always thinking about what the customer perspective is. 
right? And I think that's always a good thing for a marketing professional to think about is, okay, what's the voice of the customer telling us? And uh, one of the key, one of the traps that a, a business owner or a business person can fall into when it comes to communicating with their customers is communicating through the means that are convenient for them. But maybe that's not the preferred uh, medium of communication for your customers. In other words, do you know how your customers want to communicate? And if you do, are you meeting them there in a way that satisfies them? So you're probably doing phone, you're probably doing email, um, but there's another mainstream channel that you might be mixing, uh, missing, which is texting. Uh, so, you know, and, and you don't have to manage this from your personal cell phone. So ZipWhip enables texting right from your computer using your existing business phone number. Um, and a common problem we hear from our business uh, partners is that there's a lack of responsiveness from their customers. They, we hear people say that they have a hard time getting people to call them back, getting people to pick up their phone. Um, you know, phone and email have lost their efficacy due to spam and overuse. Uh, phone calls can be intrusive. I mean, in a public space where, you, you know, you can't talk. If you're in a meeting, you can't talk. Um, if you're concerned that the person calling needs more than a quick, simple answer, you don't have time to, to talk for more than 15 seconds, you might send it to voicemail. And, you know, data shows that more and more people are, uh, are avoiding voicemail, too. So if you leave a message, you know, they may not even check it. Um, however, with texting, um, we have data to show that consumers report a 98% open rate for text messages. So think about that. How many of you have unread texts on your phone right now? And then how many of you guys have unread emails in your inbox? If you're like me, the answer is you have zero unread texts and you have thousands, literally, of unread emails. Yep, uh, me too. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's a problem. And uh, you know, you need another reason is to think about the medium. We recently we published a report entitled State of Texting. It's uh, available for free on our site at www.zipwhip.com. Uh, a couple of nuggets from there. 39% of businesses report texting with customers, so that's great. So maybe almost four out of 10 businesses are already texting with customers, which is a good sign. And 76% of customers receive texts from a business. So if, you know, maybe your competitors are doing it uh, and you're not doing it. So you really need to think a little bit about this. It's obviously a way that people like to communicate with, with each other and with businesses. Uh, and I encourage you to actually check out that report. Um, if you can go to our site, we'll include a link to that in our uh, one sheet takeaway that Keith will send out after the webinar. Yep. So action item here. Consider texting for business, please. Texting for business is the fast and easy and convenient way for you to connect with your customers in the way that they want to communicate with you. And that's really key, meeting customers on the medium that they prefer. So on to key strategy number four, automate information delivery. Uh, that probably sounds a little intimidating. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with um, marketing or information automation, what I mean by that is using tools that send customers info information upon the request without needing your involvement. So automation tools can vary from the sophisticated to the very simple. And one of the more so sophisticated examples is Marketo, which is what we use here at, at ZipWeb. Yeah. Uh, it's a great tool that helps automate customer relationships over email, uh, but also over mobile and social digital ads and offers some great web management and analytics capabilities. I mean, that is like the Cadillac of, of marketing automation tools. But there are some also very simple versions. And I'll give you a very simple scenario just to talk to you about, you know, help provide some context for what are the, uh, what are the use cases here. So um, a really common use case and one that we do here too is a, a welcome a new user to the product or service they get immediately upon registering, right? So it usually explains how you get started, resources that they can use while they learn the product or service, uh, what they can expect going forward. And the reason that this is valuable is, is it helps the customer uh, by giving the information they need right away when they need it, meaning when they're just getting familiar with the product and not maybe necessarily sure what they should do next. And it triggers automatically so an employee doesn't have to send it to them manually. So in other words, the, the software will tell you, well, I'm sorry, will detect when someone logs in for the first time and then automatically trigger that, that, uh, that email communication. 
another common use case is providing answers to commonly asked questions. So this is especially useful if your business frequently receives phone calls asking about business hours or directions, for example. Um, ZipWhip has a few handy automation tools built into the product. For example, uh, the keyword function in the ZipWhip app. Uh, great, Keith has got a screenshot of it here to show you. Our key, keyword trigger response feature lets you answer common questions with preloaded text that are auto-delivered when those specific keywords are used when customer tasks you. So for example, in the screenshot here, you can see uh, it's set up for the text for the keyword hours. So if a customer text is over, texts over a message saying, what are your business hours? Uh, they could get this automatic response and say that we're open every day from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, doesn't mean it, uh, that you can't follow up with a more personalized text if you have time or if there's anything else that you want to let them know, but this will give them an immediate response so you don't have to you know, be right on the ball uh, right when that text comes in and it gives the answer to the person without having to wait and it also frees up your receptionist or your, your front desk person from uh, having to get back to uh, um, to a customer when they might be doing something else. Um, let's see here. Uh, next one would be auto reply. That's another good one. Um, so this is another feature in our app, and it's a it's a great way uh, to automate information delivery here, just like the keyword. But this one is for um, is basically just set up on. Uh, on, on maybe hours of, of uh, uses. There's lots of uses for autoply, but one of my favorites is for business hours. So a customer can text your business after the staff has gone home for the day and you can set up a text and response saying, hey, thanks for the text. We're currently closed, but we'll be sure to get back to you tomorrow morning during normal business hours and we open at eight. Uh, and that just provides feedback to the customer right away to make sure that they know that they've gotten, uh, they've been heard and that uh, we we'll get back to them earlier on the day. So that's really good. It's, you're setting expectations, you're making your customer feel acknowledged all with one automated text. So uh, your action step here is to look into and potentially implement some automation technology. So, you know, whether it be a really sophisticated tool like Marketo or, or automating text with ZipWhip or some other more, you know, simple automated tool, uh, there's lots to choose from. Give it a try, save your company time, the more important parts of your growing business while giving customers the answers that they need and the information that they need exactly when they need it. All right, super helpful tools uh, and ideas. It's before we launch into our last chapter, it's time for another quick poll to see if you guys are still out there. Looks like you are. Question is, have you ever surveyed your customers? This is any kind of survey, whether it's a, a survey survey or maybe you're asking them, you know, face to face or via social media. I'll give you a few moments for you to chime in there about yep or nope, ever having surveyed your customers. OK, one more second there. I'm going to close the poll. Let's look at the results. Well, a lot of you have surveyed your customers and a lot of you have not surveyed your customers. So let's see what Adam has to say about that. Well, that's that's pretty good. I'm glad to hear that half of the folks are are surveying customers. And the key thing is really that you give the cust your customers an opportunity to provide you feedback. Uh, Keith and I were joking that, um, you know, everyone has an opinion about everything. And uh, <laughs> Chances are that means that your customers probably have an opinion about your business, right? And that's good. Uh, the, oh, the catch is, is you want them to tell you about it. So when you ask them to provide feedback, it also shows that you care what they think. So how can you help them express themselves to you in a way that's actionable for you? So, I mean, one is just ask them for feedback. Verbally or in person can work. Um, checking social media, they might already be telling you and others who are checking you know, their, your site or their sites or their feeds, what they think of your service. So make sure you're keeping an eye on that. Another one would be send out a survey. Uh, so I, that's one of the actions I'd recommend that you try. Surveys are really easy to complete. I recommend that you solicit feedback through a survey. Um, a couple of quick tips on that is just make sure that before you start, define a clear attainable goal for that survey. Um, keep the more personal questions to the end uh, so we don't, 
you know, you don't get drop offs too early. And then stay away from asking double barreled questions. Make sure your questions are of a singular focus. So for example, how would you rate the quality of our product and support? Would be a double barrel question. You would probably want to ask two different questions and say, how would you rate the quality of our product? And another question, how would you rate the quality of our support? Uh, so uh, there's a, uh, I believe there's some tips also in the one sheet that you'll send out around surveys. Keith, is that right? Yep, yep that okay. is right. Survey, right. Survey Monkey has a great resource that I, I want to include on that. So yeah, stay tuned for that. Okay, super. Well, I think that uh, kind of wraps us up here, Keith. That was my last one. Well, let's give us a recap of everything you've gone over, and then we'll dive into our Q&A. OK. So uh, first one is humanize conversation with customers, uh, creating content that educates, inspires, or entertains. Understanding how your customers want to communicate with you, very important, figuring out that, that you're communicating with them in the right medium. Automated information delivery to ensure that you're getting information to your customers as quickly as possible when they really need it, and then solicit feedback from your customers so that you can take action on it. Great. Uh, this has been rich today, and so I'm excited to dive into the Q&A portion of our time together. So if you do have a question um, and you haven't found that question window yet, um, it should be over in your, your control panel. And hopefully you can, you can figure out how to use it if you haven't used it yet. Go ahead and drop a, a question there or a comment. Uh, we'd like to hear it all. And uh, some are actually already coming in, Adam. So feel free to keep on dropping it in as we go on. Um, and we'll, we'll try to get to as many of these as we can before we are signing off right around um, 1145. So first question to you, Adam, is, as AI grows more popular and more companies turn to automation tools to streamline their processes, how can businesses make sure they're still humanizing their connections? They're, it, it, they're pitting two key strategies against each other here. So can you square that, can you square that yeah. for us, Adam? Yeah, no, no problem. Um, that's a really important point too. So um, it's a great, great question. Um, yeah, there's a lot of technology out there that will enable automation and doing it more effectively. And uh, the the key there is is that you want to provide value to your customers with with those interactions. So the programming that you do there is really important that you are thinking about the customer experience. And so to me, that often means uh, giving them answers to questions that they have within the right context, maybe within their in the product, maybe right when they're getting started. Um, you know, if they are showing behavior where they're getting stuck with something, you can have uh, automation fire off a, uh, a message to them that would help get them unstuck. Uh, the idea is, is that the context is helpful, the timing is, is key, it's relevant. Um, and it doesn't mean that if you implement automation software that you do not make yourself available uh, to, to uh, direct communications. In fact, Zipwip's business is, is uh, the core of it really is about that communication, um, authentic communication with your customers directly from a conversational perspective. Uh, but uh, even if you are gonna be using um, automated features and functions, all of your communications, even the way you tell stories and make videos, uh, you know, is really trying to get that human connection. And you can do that in, in scripted ways too. So if you recall my comments about establishing shared values, uh, making sure that people understand what your company stands for, what the background is, uh, finding common ground potentially with your customers uh, in a way that they'll connect with your business more, that's very important. And then the tone of your communications is important too. So you wanna make sure you don't alienate them with informal, I'm sorry, with formal language or uh, impersonal uh, communication. You want to make sure you talk to them in a way that feels authentic and that they feel like that, uh, that you understand them. Okay, there's still time for questions, so keep on uh, plopping them in there if you have them. Here's the next one for you, Adam. Um, looks like someone's maybe maybe new to uh, the business that they have. The question is, my company has never created any content. Where is the best place to mm -hmm. start? Yeah, great question. So I actually think uh, if you have a website, uh, I'd recommend that you just create some content on your site. And, um, you know, it's helpful because 
if you're creating content and adding value, people get to know a little bit more about what it is what you do. You can provide some helpful tips and tricks. It really helps give some personality to your business. Uh, maybe you're providing some interesting content that could be useful to your business, but also it's a way for people to discover your business. And that is, that is a really key part of, um, of, of the strategy for content, which is, you know, somebody, if you have, an, if you have something to say, let's say you're in the, um, the dentistry business and you, uh, have, um, uh, some opinions about some new type of, of dental technology that's available to customer, to your patients that would be, uh, you know, maybe cutting edge or it's, it's new or trendy or just might make them feel better. Uh, you should, uh, you should write about it because people who might have heard about this, you know, what might be searching online, uh, for some background on that new piece of technology and your business may come up in those search results. So it's a really, really important thing to invest in that, um, in that copy. Uh, I recommend, you know, just writing something that's of interest to you. You don't have to be uh, terribly um, formal about it, actually, you mean, or structured. You can just write a nice, helpful, thoughtful piece. And I just recommend that you think about those three uh, categories of content that I recommend you consider, which is educate, inspire, or entertain. If you can do one or more of those, I think you'll be in pretty good shape. Sounds good. Okay, you mentioned the ZipWhip app, and it looks like someone out there is not yet using it. They're wondering how much training does ZipWhip require, and can more than one person use it at once? Add that we host. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, yeah, that's it. And can more okay. than can more than one person use it at, at once? Yes. Uh, so the answer is yes. Uh, more than one person can use it at once. And no, it's uh, the training. I mean, there is some learning of the of the user interface and the experience, but it's very simple. Um, and we do provide some, you know, helpful documentation if people get stuck or if you know you get an email, we'll teach you how to do some things, and we have some some support options. But uh, most of our our um, our customers don't need it. It's very user friendly. Uh, and it's just like uh, you know, sending a text only. You're doing it through um, through your browser or your app on your desktop. So really efficient. Um, our customers tell us that it's really nice because you can uh, you you can have that open while you may be also doing something else like talking on the phone or doing schedules or whatever it is. And you know that can come up, and you can also kind of multitask and maybe handle multiple chats at once. So. Uh, the feedback has been really positive and uh, it's very easy to use and e easy to get set up with. And remember, you can use your existing business line, which is a really key point because a lot of folks uh, out there may have gotten a text from a, you know, a, a business and, you know, my, I keep using a dentist example. My dental, dentist sends me texts to confirm if, uh, if um, I'm going to be able to make it to my appointment. And it just comes from this random five digit number that doesn't look like a phone number. In fact, it's not a phone number. Uh, and they have to say who it's from. It's called a short code. And it just says press C to confirm. And so I can press C to confirm and they'll get that message. But if I was to send them a note, uh, you know, s telling them that I was gonna be 15 minutes late, that would just go into the ether and they'd never get it. It would just, ne it would be lost in the space and uh, they'd never get that text message, which would be a shame. It's an opportunity to make sure you have good communication with your customers. And if I was to try to call that number, it also wouldn't go to the dentist's office, right? So uh, Zip Whip solves both of those problems because we enable it to come from your existing business number, the one that you use your business day to day that you can receive phone calls on, and you can text from it. So uh, you're making sure that you're capturing every text that comes back to you and that people, if they did want to call you, you can just pick that number that they're familiar with and call you directly. Cool, and just to add on top of that, since I'm a video and a webinar guy, there are lots of uh, <coughs> videos out there that help you with all the different functions of getting up to speed with like say that auto reply function, there's videos for that. And there is a delightful colleague of mine here called Courtney, um, and she does. She actually does uh, webinars just like this. Since you are a webinar person, if you're watching this, she actually helps people live like this and takes questions, getting people up to speed with the uh, with the zip web. So lots of resources yep. for you. It's it's pretty easy to start with, but but you can do deeper dives as you go along. Okay, yep, we great have, point. Looks, hey, thank you. Looks like yeah. Looks like we have time for a couple more questions here, and they keep on coming in here. So here's one, Adam. 
Can you give some insight into how the key strategies apply to social media marketing for business, uh, for business to business, i.e. Twitter, Instagram, et cetera? Yeah, definitely. Uh, and that is a really great question. I, there's, there's a lot of topics, uh, a lot of ways I can think of right off the bat. So let me think about the first one, which is um, every piece of social media content that you, or that you share about, even if it's just a brief thing, that is actually content. Right. And so when you think about the content that you create for your marketing program, um, you can actually slice and dice the content that uh, the article that you wrote or the report that you created and uh, includes little snippets through your social media. And it's really helpful. Um, and I always would recommend linking back to your site because you want to bring people back to where your business uh, value proposition is so they can learn a little bit more about you. Uh, so I think that's a really important factor there. So. Um, you can you can promote your content on there as well. So not only just the snippets, but if you have a whole article or a video, videos are really popular on social media. In fact, I, I think uh, I don't have the stat handy, but I do remember that video also was uh, was made sure that those posts are are getting the uh, the highest levels of engagement uh, when when the video is is present. Uh, so I really recommend that you consider promoting your content, cutting up your content, and linking back to your site um, in, in terms of uh, leveraging social media for marketing. The next thing I'll say about social media too is, is that the, the last thing where I said solicit feedback from your customers, you should be monitoring social media. Uh, so it's not just a one-way channel. It's not about just blasting out your updates. It's about seeing what's out there, what people are saying. A lot of times people are going to respond to you there. Again, the, you got to work, work with them on the uh, on the the medium that pre they prefer. So if they're comfortable writing you a Facebook message, you should be looking out for that and responding to it. Um, you, you'll get some great feedback. You'll connect with your customers, and, and if there is an issue, you can mitigate it. And that's important because, of course, social media is a public platform, so uh, other folks get to see how you handle it. Whether you don't, which would be bad. Um, or if you promptly take care of it and empathize and show them uh, that you care and that you're going to take care of it, then that could leave a really good impression. Great. Great ideas, Adam. And it looks like we are nearing the end of our time together and that we didn't have time to answer all of your, the great questions. So we are going to do everything we can to get back to you in the next few days to answer your question because we value, you value your engagement here. And uh, there's some great questions here that didn't get answered. So thanks for, uh, thanks for tossing those into the mix for us. Uh, we are going to start closing down shop. But a few things before we leave you. Uh, first of all, thank you, Adam, for all of your time and effort oh, making all the, all the content together, the slides, everything. I think it's a powerful combination. And I'm hoping and, and expecting that, that everyone's going to get be able to take at least one thing away with with them and that that's our hope for you that you, get, you yeah. have one tip that you can run with with on this my personal favorite is video optimizing audio but there there was a lot of other uh, other good ones as well so if you have been become curious about the uh, zip whips texting for business tool um i want you to let let you know that you can try this out for free for a 14 day a 14 day trial if you're curious about that you can go to zipwhip.com slash free trial that URL will also be in the one sheet that I'm going to be delivering to you. And on that note, <clears throat> we practice what we preach here, right? We are going to send you a sur survey, not only send it to you, but when the, when the go-to webinar ends officially, there's going to be a review that pops up just like the poll did. And so uh, as a thank you for um, filling that out, um, right away and doing getting it done taking it off your list it t it'll take one minute to do it I think it's five easy, easy questions for you to answer about what you just experienced um, I'm going to be sending you as a thank you a one sheet cheat sheet of everything that we went through today or the main key points I should say uh, along with some URLs to the resources that we've been mentioning and I'll send you a link to the video recording of what you saw today so you can review any of that you can take it to your team uh, for to review various sections or the whole thing if you want so um be on the lookout for an email from me i will, I will send this out to everyone i'll have that cheat sheet and the link to the video stay tuned next week actually a week from today we have a our next webinar zipinar if you will 
is all about that state of texting 2019 report that Adam mentioned that we, we collected all this data, all this data, we put a lot of effort into um, really trying to understand how both consumers and businesses are using texting. And this is what we came up with. Natasha, the leader of that, um, that study, is going to be here with us going through that. And you'll have a chance to ask her questions and as she picks apart the data, data and helps us interpret what it means. So again, right as we close, that survey is going to pop, pop up. Please, please, please uh, fill it out so we can improve what we do over here and uh, continue delivering content that helps you in your communication uh, strategies with your business. Thanks again, and we'll hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.